Hey guys, I'm John Servitor. I'm the ATA for Max Wilson, who is my TA, and today we're going to be going over the Galvanic Skin Response Lab. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pick up these sheets here, and these are going to show you your jobs today. So we have four roles. We have the subject, the recorder, and the director. And the fourth role is going to be your scribe, who's going to write down all the data while it's being collected through the computer. So after you've got your subject picked out, the next thing you're going to want to do is connect them to the equipment. The first thing we're going to connect is the respiratory rate detector. This is going to go into channel 1 and it's shown here. You're going to want it to be tight but not too tight, so just snug. The second thing we're going to connect is the set of three electrodes. This is going to go into channel 2. The first electrode is going to be connected on your right wrist and it's going to be the white lead. The second electrode is going to be connected on your right ankle and it's going to be the black lead. And the third electrode is going to be connected to your left ankle, and it's going to be the red lead. The final thing we're going to want to put together is the two electrode setup, and this is going to go into channel three. These two are going to be connected on the index and middle fingers of your left hand. The black lead is going to go to your left index finger, and the red lead is going to go to your left middle finger. And after you've done all this, you're ready to start calibrating. Now that your subject is all set up, they can go ahead, relax, and take a seat near the equipment. Anywhere works, but just be sure they can't see the computer screen, as this may skew your results later. So, once they've done this, the recorder can jump on the computer, open up the Biopack Labs icon on the desktop, and then click the EDA and Polygraph Lab here. You'll then be asked to name your file. Any name works, and once we do that, we're going to go ahead and click OK, and we'll be taken to the calibration screen. Now, before we calibrate, we're going to want to make sure our subject knows what they're going to do during the calibration. So the subject is going to take one deep breath once the calibration starts, exhale, and then continue breathing normally for the rest of the calibration. Once they know this, you can go ahead and click calibrate and the calibration will begin. Now, your results should look something similar to this. They don't have to look exactly like this, but if, say, your respiratory peaks aren't as high or defined, or maybe you have no EDA graph, then you can go back, maybe adjust some of your equipment to get better results, and you can redo the calibration then. If not, though, and they look similar to this, you're ready to move on to running the experiment. Now that your subject is calibrated to the equipment, we can move on to the experiment part of the lab. However, before we do this, we're going to want to make sure that everyone is clear on their roles, because once we hit record, it will start recording right away. A complete description of the roles can be found on the sheets I showed earlier with each job on them. Once everyone knows their role, we can go ahead and hit record. Now, once the experiment has begun recording, one of the most important things the recorder is going to do is add markers at important points throughout the data collection. This can be done by hitting the function key, F9, at the top of the keyboard, and all of the points we are going to want to do it at are stated on your roll sheet. As you can see, the markers are being added above the graph, and they look like squares with little triangles in them. These markers are going to be used later when we're analyzing our data, and it is important that they are not only in the right position, but are also labeled correctly. So once our data is finished recording, we can hit suspend, and we can edit them in this white bar here. The marker shown is from the last added marker, so we can just edit it now. To get to the other markers, we will need to click on them, and then their labels will pop up in the white bar, and we can edit them as well. So we'll just go ahead here and make sure that all the rest of these markers are correct. And once they are, once we verify them all, we can move on to our data analysis section. So once you've collected all your data, we can move on to the data analysis. To do this, we're going to want to click Done, then click Yes, and then click Analyze the current data file. Once we do all of that, our data will pop up condensed. Next, we're going to want to select the eye tool at the bottom right of the data. This will allow us to select the data we want to get our values for. To do this, we are going to drag the cursor from the point at which the event we are interested happened to the next event, like so. We can find our values for heart rate here, respiratory rate here, and EDA here. To get our values for the third experiment, we are going to need to zoom in because the data points are much closer together. To do this, we can click on the magnifying glass icon next to the eye tool, and then click on our data. Then, we can reselect the eye tool and drag from marker to marker again on our data. For this experiment, the area between the first and second markers is going to be where we're going to get our latency value from. But to do this, we need to add another value at the top. So we can do that by selecting one of the tabs that says None and changing it to Delta T. 
and then it will display our latency next to it. Finally, we can select between the next two markers to find our heart rate, respiratory rate, and EDF. Once we've done this for all of our data points, we've finished the lab.